consider yourself a born-again Christian? Absolutely. I grew up in a Christian family, and as a teenager, I made the decision to accept Jesus as my personal Savior, and uh, I think about it every day. Uh, tell me a little more about that. Um, when you say you accepted Jesus as your personal Savior, how old were you? Were you uh, uh, Fifteen. Was it like a moment in time, or was it a, uh, you know, did you gradually come to the faith? I'd say there was a moment in time, but it might have had to have been repeated a couple of times. It didn't always stick, uh, and I don't know if that's appropriate or not, but it, uh, it hasn't always been easy. And there's a, um, there's a, a quote by uh, Dostoevsky that I like, and he, he talks about that I did not come to my Hosanna through childlike faith, but through a fiery furnace of doubt. And I think there was some of that growing up. And, uh, you know, I would say that it's hard sometimes as a physician because we see a lot of terrible things. And, you know, you it's hard to see the hand of God sometimes in horrible suffering. And physicians are privy to more of that than the ordinary people. And I've seen uh, things that, you know, part of when they say the Hippocratic Oath, it's about privacy. It is, but it's also about sort of the, the burden of seeing things that really most ordinary people don't see or wouldn't like to see. How does that, um, that same question in faith, because I struggle with that myself, you, know, you see the, the, the hurt and the harm around the world, the, the wars, the, um, you know, the suffering, how does that influence you in policy and politics? Well, I think there, uh, there truly is right and wrong. There's right and wrong in policy, there's right and wrong in behavior. And, you know, so many things, people think that everything's relative and that there is no sort of standard. And I think that's part of the problem we've gotten into, both in government, in analyzing war, and analyzing whether we need to be involved in war. And I think uh, that's a mistake and really kind of why uh, we're adrift, you know. And sometimes I'll say that I think really what ails us is sort of a sickness that we have, and maybe it's a spiritual sickness. But the important part of understanding that is also knowing that government doesn't have all the answers. And so when I, I talk to pastors or ministers and I say, they're looking to me, I say, I'm looking to you in the sense that don't think your government has the answers to all these things. And I'm not saying government doesn't have some of the answers, but really some of the answers need to come from the people and also need to come from, from persuading people that they're taking the wrong course. Mm -hmm.